Hello, my name is Nini Icasas. Welcome to Nueve, an Advent special of Pathways of Hope. A look into the lives of key people around the birth of Jesus. Today, we will look into the life of Elizabeth. Who was Elizabeth? In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah and his wife was Elizabeth. They were both descendants of Aaron, the brother of Moses. Elizabeth and Zechariah were both righteous in the sight of God, walking blameless in all the commandments and requirements of the Lord. They had no child because Elizabeth was barren and both were advanced in years. But God had a plan for them. Let's see how this plan unfolds. One day, while Zechariah was performing his priestly service before God in the temple, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared to him and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For now I am an old man, and my wife Elizabeth is advanced in years. And the angel replied, I am Gabriel, and I was sent to announce to you the good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to talk until these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at the proper time. Zechariah was unable to speak when he came out of the sanctuary. After this time, Elizabeth conceived and went into seclusion for five months. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel also appeared to Mary, a virgin betrothed to Joseph, to tell her that she would conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Jesus. The child to be born would be called Holy, the Son of God. And the angel told Mary, Behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren, for nothing is impossible with God. In today's Gospel, taken from Luke chapter 1, 39 to 45, we find Mary, Elizabeth's cousin, setting out in haste to the hill country to visit Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant in her womb leaped for joy. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she cried out in a loud voice, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. The visitation of Mary to Elizabeth must have been a joyful time for the cousins to be together no wonder it is the second joyful mystery of the Holy Rosary. As a woman, I can imagine them gushing over with joy and excitement at the latest things that have been happening in their lives. First, angels having appeared to them and announcing unbelievable news that they would conceive. Imagine Mary, a young virgin, getting pregnant by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Then Elizabeth, an old woman, past her prime, is also now conceiving by God's grace. Both were miracles. Let us now take a closer look at Elizabeth and see what we can learn from this short episode in her life. Number one, God turns a problem into a blessing. Zechariah and Elizabeth were childless well into their senior years. To our 21st century minds, this might not be a big deal, but in their culture, it was. 
People at that time viewed children as a reward and a blessing from the Lord. If a couple experienced infertility, it was interpreted to mean that they had fallen out of God's grace, maybe because of some unconfessed sin in their lives. How many times have we experienced God's love and power shown in this way? He takes something we are struggling with and makes it a point of conversion in faith or a moment of growth in trust and love for the Lord. God answer prayers in his own perfect time and in his own perfect way. That's number two. When the angel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah, he said, Do not be afraid because your prayer has been heard. Zechariah and Elizabeth must have been praying for a child for many years, but their prayers had remained unanswered. Did they continue praying? until they were well advanced in years? Or did they stop praying for a child when they knew that Elizabeth was no longer capable of conceiving? Doesn't the story of Elizabeth tell you something about prayer? That our prayers have no shelf life or expiry date. God hear, hears and remembers our prayers even if sometimes we forget to pray them or we have gotten tired praying about them. When we pray, our prayers enter the timelessness of eternity. Elizabeth conceived when she was past her prime. It was a biological miracle. Nothing is impossible with God. God answers our prayers in his own perfect time and in his own perfect way. Number three, through our relationship with God, we can experience the ongoing visitation of God in our lives. Today, we celebrate the visitation of Mary to Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her own womb leaped for joy. What happens during a visitation? When family or friends visit us, we experience the blessing and joy of being around loved ones. We experience the blessing of visitation when the plumber comes to fix a broken faucet or when the doctor comes to bring healing in times of illness. What's the significance of God's visitation in our lives? God's visitation is a manifestation of the presence and influence of God in any situation or in the life of an individual or a group of people. A visitation of God broke the long season of barrenness in Sarah's life with the birth of Isaac. God's visitation broke the long season of Israel's bondage in Egypt. In the New Testament, the ultimate visitation of God to his people was fulfilled in the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. God also visits us in many ways if we open our doors to him. The Holy Spirit can speak to us through a Bible verse, through a song, through a dream, through a friend, or through an event in our lives. When God visits, sorrow is turned into joy. Fear and anxiety disappear. Hunger is satisfied. Today, I pray that you may experience God's divine visitation in your life as joyfully as Elizabeth did. Whatever it is that represents barrenness in your life, may the Lord replace it with abundant, overflowing blessings in the name of Jesus, especially this Advent season. Saint Elizabeth, pray for us.